Are you currently building or wanting to build serverless applications? Are you wondering what observability is or wanting to find out how you can get more insights into how your application and business are running? Well, this video series is just for you. Welcome to Mastering Serverless Application Observability. I'm Julian Wood, a Senior Developer Advocate for Serverless at AWS. In the series, I go through adding observability to a demo serverless application, which you can try yourself. After this introduction, I'm going to spend a good amount of time going through what observability is to help you understand the benefits and how it differs from monitoring and explore the data that can help you give you those insights. Then I go through how to gather and use metrics, alerts, logs, and traces with the demo application using AWS services. And then I'll show how you can bring all the data together to understand your application better, answer questions about your application, or troubleshoot an issue. Lastly, I cover how to integrate some observability tools into your development workflows. It's not going to be all slides. I'll be showing plenty of demos and diving into code too. So let's get started with mastering serverless application observability. So when we talk about a serverless application, we're talking about the actions of an event-driven application. An event source, which could be a change in something, a change in data, a change in resource state, or an event can also be a request to an HTTP endpoint. This event then causes a Lambda function to run, which does some processing on the event. The function typically comprises a small amount of single-purpose code and can be written in a number of languages provided by the platform or you can bring your own language using the Runtime API. The function can then go and perform whatever it needs to do. That could be updating a database record, returning something to a client, talking to another API or endpoint that exists somewhere, you know, send its output to another service, preferably serverless for you. Lambda is a compute service, so it itself is running on top of underlying compute resources. Yes, there are servers in serverless, but you don't have to think about them. You don't have to manage or scale them. So this is a basic architecture diagram for a small serverless web application. We have a service called AWS Amplify Console, which you can use as a hosting platform for single page applications and static assets, such as HTML, uh, CSS, and you know, various JavaScript frameworks. You can use a service like Amazon Cognito to manage user authentication for your customers. And this has got a lot of functionality itself. Lastly, where we're going to be spending most of the time in this video series for observability is looking at the backend for a web application. A basic backend is where the client makes calls to our managed API services. This is API Gateway, which then invokes our Lambda function, which includes our business logic. And then this does some processing, and in this case, stores information in DynamoDB, a NoSQL database. Now, as you build your serverless applications, in this case, a web application, there's normally a lot more going on than just a few components, as I've previously shown. So throughout the series, I'm going to be using a real application called FreshTracks to show you how observability can help you with your serverless applications. FreshTracks is a demo app that allows you to upload GPS activity data captured from a device in order to track your activity. For example, these could be things like skiing or snowboarding or even running. Now, you can try out the app for yourself on myfreshtracks.com, and all the code is publicly available on GitHub, so you can see exactly how it works and deploy it into your own account and explore even more. Repo also shows how you can extend the app and integrate with multiple EventBridge SaaS partners. So it's time to bring this architecture to life. This is what FreshTracks looks as a real application. The front end is coming from Amplify, and this is ultimately backed by S3. It's a single page application, text, uh, pictures, whatever you want to put on the application. And it's got some links here to the external third party integrations and a link here for the source code, which is available on GitHub. So you can follow along and you can clone this repository and do everything yourself. So if we go and then log into this application, this is using Auth0 as an external identity provider. So remember, you don't have to only use AWS services. So I log in. I've already registered for this application. So it's allowing me to log in. And I have a, a profile which has been created, you can see, on the top right. 
So if I look at activities, well, I haven't uploaded any GPX activities yet. So I'm going to go and drag a GPX file, and I'm just going to upload this onto the front end. And then this is going to kick off the whole workflow. Lambda is going to create and send a pre-signed URL, and the file is ultimately now stored in S3. And as soon as the track file lands up in S3, it's over to EventBridge, which starts the whole Step Functions Express workflow. This then goes through the three Lambda functions to process the data and stores the metadata in DynamoDB and calculates some information. And then when it's all done, the front end is going to be updated via IoT call. So we're going to see that shortly when the front end is going to have a notification that this GPX data has been uh, updated. There we go. So what I can do is then I can go and I can uh, click on this uh, activity. And this is then going to talk again via API Gateway, grab the data from DynamoDB, and the Lambda function is going to pull it from DynamoDB, and the front end is going to do the lovely rendering of the activities. And this is going to pull the data. It's now going to build a map, which we're going to see shortly. And look at that. Look how good that map looks from the front end. Also, part of that step functions workflow was pulling out some of the metadata I was talking about before. So this is calculating distance, elevation, average speed, whatever you want to do. And this is then storing that metadata in DynamoDB, which is um, sending it back to the front end. So I've only got one activity which I've uploaded now, but of course you could carry on and upload as many activities as you want. So this is a look at the FreshTracks application. You can do it all yourself, download the code from GitHub, and basically play along while we're doing this video series. So this is the FreshTracks architecture again. This is a web-based, entirely serverless application for uploading and viewing your mountain ski or snowboard adventures. Amplify Console hosts the front-end code, which is stored in S3. This manages the URL and has a built-in continuous integration, continuous development and deployment pipeline. When code is pushed to GitHub, in this case, in the FreshTracks repo, new builds and tests are done automatically, and the updated application is deployed if everything looks OK. Authentication is managed by an external service, Auth0. There is an API Gateway REST API, which allows the front-end client to upload the track's GPS data as a GPX file directly to S3 with pre-signed URLs and a Lambda authorizer. When the track lands up in S3, an EventBridge rule kicks off a Step Functions Express workflow. And this processes the GPX file data. It then stores the metadata in DynamoDB and then notifies the front end, and this uses IoT Core, that the track has been uploaded. The client can then uh, retrieve the list of previously uploaded tracks, again, this is via API Gateway from DynamoDB, and then select an individual track to show the GPS routes on a map. So I've shown you a little taste of what I'm going to be covering, what a serverless application is, and an overview of the demo application FreshTracks. For plenty more information, we have a super aggregation site called serverlessland.com, and that's got lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops, and learning paths. Everything about serverless on AWS. In the next video, I go into more depth about understanding what observability is. Thank you for watching. My name is Julian Wood, and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.